Hi, amazing people i welcome you in this great channel if it's your first time and you like what i do here please do not hesitate to subscribe and put your notification bell so that you'll be able to know when i upload a new video i present to you information across the globe especially what is happening in nigeria i appreciate your massive support please after watching if you like what you watch subscribe put on your notification bell so that you'll be able to know when i upload a new video the way i present the news i analyze it first because sometimes i hear a lot of you saying you talk too much at least I need to introduce the video so that you will have an insight of what you are about to watch. Then later we'll sit down there, we'll watch the video together, we'll go to the comment section. As we all are entitled to our opinion, we'll drop our opinion or whatever we think about the video and reach to the conclusion as we watch this video together now. Numbers are harrowing and you know when we see these kidnap for ransom uh, scenarios playing out, it's happening more and more and it's been exacerbated perhaps by the pandemic but as a former education minister how do you feel every time you hear these stories coming through and as someone that was uh you know at at the epicenter of bring back our girls um and and pushing that narrative over that time in nigeria this must be so difficult for you to see it increasing over the last few months I think that difficult is an understatement, Elena. Uh, the reason is that when seven years ago Chiba girls were abducted, uh, this was my fear. My fear was that if we did not give justice to those school children at that time, it was going to send a wrong signal and was going to uh, basically incentivize that kind of behavior where, uh, you know, uh, savages would uh, clearly go to schools and take children in the hope of uh, negotiating with them. So to see that seven years after, only the first half of this year, we have had um, some 2,600 or thereabouts abductions in more than 280 incidents in the country of people, just because abduction has become an industry unto itself, a sign of poor governance. When governance is gone, these things happen. So this is where it becomes interesting because you're talking about governance and when children are kidnapped and there's a ransom attached, what should the government be doing here? Because we know that if you pay, then it could happen again. But at the same time, you have to do everything in your power to ensure that you get those children back. Yes, we have to fix the issue of there should be no kidnappings. But if it does happen and we know that this is the cycle that we're in right now, what should the reaction be here? So there are no easy answers, which is why when a, 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 a menace, a, a phenomenon that, that is clearly uh, abhorrent happens in a society, there is absolutely no excuse for the leaders to uh, dilly-dally on how to make sure that they would take preventive actions. Uh, because if you allow things to fester, then it becomes more difficult. Um, so in effect, what you have to still go back to is the necessity for the institutions of the state to function well. The, 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 the matter of um, you know, having to negotiate to, to get children out could have been something that was uh, you know, in the early days of, of this abduction. And then to immediately fix every loophole that made it possible for a gang of people to be comfortable enough to think that they can dare the systems of security in our country. It, it, it really tells a lot of, of the level of uh, you know, poor performance of the systems of, of, of security. Let's talk about leadership here. Because leadership, so leadership here has been fascinating because I was in Nigeria, um, you know, literally when Chibok happened. And um, President Goodluck Jonathan at the time you know, it was felt by the international community, you know, the question was, was he doing enough? Then Muhammadu Buhari promised to eradicate Boko Haram and to eradicate terrorism. And here we're sitting in a situation where uh, the numbers are absolutely harrowing. What do you think needs to be done? Are we talking about soldiers on the ground in Kaduna where they're protecting schools and protecting children? How do we ensure that this doesn't happen so we're not in a kidnap for ransom scenario constantly? 
So there was an initiative uh, uh, known as the Safe School Initiative, which was well designed uh, to tackle this menace. But that was not taken seriously, and therefore it fell through. And, and so today you see, uh, you know, schools that are in the line of the activities of, 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 uh, of criminal gangs, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, headsmen uh, that, 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 that are uh, criminal, uh, that uh, the, you see Boko Haram terrorists, schools that are within their line of operations, totally unguarded. How can you have that kind of governance? And then the second thing you said about leadership is that, you see, our political process is so broken that we keep on electing uh, leaders who really do not care that much about providing good governance and also lack the competency as well as the capacity to do so. And therefore, we must, as citizens, now take more interest in the way that we're governed. In the past, citizens thought that it was just a few people's business. Today, it is clear to all of us that fixing governance, fixing our politics is the business of every Nigerian. I don't, I don't have much time left. Um, would you go back into government? Would you go back into the political world? Very quickly. I am, now training, I am now training the future leaders of the country. Only God knows what the future holds. But I do think that one person cannot save the situation. We need many new leaders that are ethical, that are competent, and that are capable to fix our country from the bottom to the top. I wish you luck. Thank you for your efforts. Uh, much appreciated for your time and your insight. And that you match, you going to be sleepy at this critical time when all of us are supposed to stand up, when all of us are supposed to match as a people. You are dragging, you are dragging position, you are dragging money, you are dragging how to handle account. I wonder how Mazen Nanakalu brought these kind of people close to him. I wonder how this man brought this devilly set of people to himself. I wonder how Mazen and the kind of managed to, to, to get to where we are today. Look at these people at this critical time when we need to, to build a synergy, when we need to work together, when we need to move together, when we need to stand as a people and do something to bring our leader out and get our freedom restored. These people are in America, in Germany. They are everywhere fighting for money, fighting for account, fighting to who is going to manage account. What is this? What is happening to this generation? What is happening to you people? What am I doing? Give me a mono. Give me a mono. I say, Jineke. Tuesday. Praise the living God. So, that I want to make my own offer. If you can give it to me, I will be happy. They say, okay, I should make an offer. So, since all the two slots came with it, let me make an offer for two slots. Okay, I'm going to make an offer I said, okay, say the one you want. He said, okay, number one, release Nam the Kano. much for watching this video together with me like i said before if you like this channel if you like what you just watched if you like what is happening here please do not hesitate to subscribe put on your notification bell keep on watching god's loss you channel because you are going to be getting information on daily basis about what is happening in the world and in nigeria and in biafran land 
Thank you so much. I appreciate your massive support in this channel. May God Almighty continue to bless each and every one of you. Bye bye until we meet again.